the first thing we do is we get a script and we get storyboards that the director puts together and we break down the script into C numbers and as you can see this entire storyboard is this particular script. Well look, the first thing that jumped out at me when I read the script for Alien Resurrection was that it was it was constructed more like a comic book than it was a script. Uh, it was over 220 pages I believe and the entire left hand side of every script page had storyboards and the entire right hand side had the script notes and the dialogue. So immediately I understood the importance of the visuals in this movie because how many scripts do you know that are constructed with the visuals attached <laughs> to, you know, to the actual text? And not just the visual effects in the film, the entire, um, all dialogue sequences, ev virtually every angle that Jean-Pierre intended to use. So we to, to break down everything and to, uh, to sort out what's what should be, uh, 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 what should be, uh, um, you know, CG alien? What should be uh, on the uh, on the uh, uh, set piece? What should be CG uh, for for the for the set, or what is uh, puppe puppeteers? And we figure out with the supervisors what the methodology is. Some methodologies are CGI. Some of it's matte painting with miniatures or plate shooting with other kinds of animation. You split the work and to, to find out what, what is the best. Uh, regarding the idea of, of Jean-Pierre, what, what was the best for him uh, to, to, to make the, uh, the shooting as simple as possible. Those decisions are made, and Pitoff and I made them early on, and really we made them in a closed room. It was up to the two of us to decide how we would do something. Because, this, the, as I said, the script had been broken down into uh, a very detailed storyboard, we knew what Jean-Pierre wanted. And we actually make a list what it is, have the director approve it, yeah. and then we actually put it in some type of Bible format, which we have all the shots and scene numbers labeled with a different methodology, who the vendors are, and we kind of track it, and this is basically our Bible of all the different types of shots on this particular film. We were able to save a great deal of money by bringing in the company from uh, overseas, uh, Pitoff's company from overseas, and do things in-house. Um, you know, that had been tried on a couple of other shows around, you know, in the years preceding uh, Alien Resurrection and had seemed to work out, so we didn't feel like it was uh, that we were taking a big leap of, leap of faith. The French Compagnie du Bois was selected because they, they did the City of the Children, and a lot of this, uh, uh, this stuff, this matte painting stuff, the compositing stuff, and all that, so, uh, and we. Jean-Pierre and I, of course, we know very well Dubois, so we are very uh, comfortable with them. They ended up compositing all the miniature shots with backgrounds and, and uh, uh, star fields. And we said, well, they'll do all of that. But when it comes to things like uh, the alien, we have to go out. Uh, we have to get someone who's really good, um, who has 3D experience in, in creating characters, um, uh, you know, the, the Alien uh, series had never had a, a computer-generated alien. So this was going to be new. For the CG, we select uh, uh, Blue Sky Studio in New York because they did um, this movie called Joe's Apartment. It featured a lot of uh, cockroaches. And uh, the character animation that they got into some of those cockroaches is what impressed us the most. Which was really well animated and the interaction was really good and we are really impressed by, by, by the work on this movie. So. Uh, we are really happy to work with them for that. They certainly had the talent, and except for their distance, which we had to figure out, you know, what we were going to do with, um, you know, talking to them on a regular basis. Except for the distance, uh, everything seemed perfect. And um, ultimately, what we did to to fix that one problem was there was something called sprint drums at the time, which is archaic now, <laughs> but it was it was a way to have a camera on our end and a, and a computer screen where we could see their animations, um, make comments on them, you know, scroll on the, right, right onto the screen, and uh, they would be able to see what we're writing. You know, we'd say, well, on this area, you know, you can improve that and you see how he moves like this, you know, take this, this path would be better, see if that looks. The creature has no texture maps. It's almost like a kind of a window dummy performing uh, the action that we'd like the alien to perform. And then we had other assorted 3D shots that, uh, that VIFX was going to do. VIFX in Los Angeles for other CG stuff, 
We did a really good stuff too. And uh, the, the, the last company was Vertex, uh, a company from Taiwan, who did all the uh, uh, the roto. I mean, to all the wire removal and all the retouching on the on the image. And so it's funny because there's a, a two, a one Californian company, a New Yorker company, a Taiwan company, a French company. It's, it's a word movie. <laughs> the reason that we broke things up like that, it just it, it made sense for the strengths that particular companies have. It's the way we all, you know, supervisors will always work. You, you work towards the strength of a company, try not to give them uh, things that they're going to struggle with. At this time, it was kind of uh, the, the beginning of, uh, of the, the CG creator. As, uh, on a, I can't remember, but I think it's kind of uh, 30 or 40 shots. We uh, we see it, it, it's a lot, yeah. This is probably one of the biggest visual effects films that I've done in my last ten years of working. Um, what's extensive about it is the complexity of the shots. It's multi-layer compositing. It's not you just your straight 2D compositing. We have eight to fifteen levels on some of these shots that you'll see in the film. In the first Alien, the most interesting thing, you couldn't, you you can't see the Alien. But after three movies, I thought, now we know the, the alien. We can show more because, you know, the surprise is finished now. So Blue Sky had in charge the alien. So they had to, uh, to build this, the, the CG alien and to, uh, to, be, uh, and to link the, this CG alien with the, uh, with the ADL alien, which was, which, uh, which was the, uh, the practical one. There was a, 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 some great uh, nature footage that, uh, that Jean-Pierre found that he was using with um, uh, Blue Sky, who was doing the CGI versions of the alien. And uh, there was, some of it was crocodile, some of it was marine iguana, uh, because of the way they, they wiggled their entire body and not just their tail. We built a, um, uh, a version that could be uh, towed uh, that had a, uh, a tail that would, uh, that would swim like that, uh, which was used, I think, maybe in one place. But most of it was, you know, completely submerged underwater. So most of it, when you see the film, is the CGI versions swimming underwater. Well, when Blue Sky came in, the, the look of the alien had already been established in terms of the suit. So they were being very respectful, saying, you know, this is the look, we just want to match this and, and make sure it looks right. And, and tell us about the movement of this thing. And, and there were a couple of times where I would put on the suit and just do movement tests, you know, um, run bys the camera, run, run bys in front of the camera because there's also a CGI version of it, of it stepping over the camera and walking down the hallway and stopping and turning back. So we did, we did some motion studies like that that was just used as a reference. They had to swim for the first time. And, uh, and I, I remember they proposed me to, to put the legs in three parts, a little bit like a frog, you know. And uh, because this time we could see the legs, it was the first time because the GI. Uh, but the men in suit obviously had no more legs, and it's, it was forbidden to shoot it because it was a man in suit. <laughs> you, it's very difficult to, to shoot the men in suit to to forget it's a man, you know. And you have to, to make just close up, very close close up. With me in a suit, just walking. With, with you know normal configuration of a human leg with a knee and an ankle and a hip is different from the alien. It has an extra joint. It's got that extended uh, foot pad like a dog leg sort of thing. So they had to transcribe all my movements into matching that kind of, of, of physical structure. What we provided for Blue Sky was um, a uh, small scale sculpture of the alien um, so that it would be exact to what we were doing. We scaled it precisely. It's a beautiful sculpture that Steve Wang did, an interpretation of the full-scale suit. And then we just sent them a head, full-scale head for them to scan, uh, and a full-scale tail for them to scan, and then they could just combine the, the pieces. And it was tough because, you know, to have uh, really the, the, the good texture and the perfect animation that match with uh, CG and, and real one, and also very complicated because deal with uh, a CG creature underwater. It's a big deal, and we threw smokes, and it was kind of uh, difficult. Yeah.